Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate some of the basic principles of programming using the Johnson Controls Metasys LCT or control system programming option that is available within the NAEs and NCEs. This is a very powerful tool and it is something that uh, may help you in your particular applications. I want to show you one example of just how complex that you can get with writing an LCT program. You can see here that uh, we are pretty much running a, an entire chill water system with this program here. And uh, you know this is something that was necessary for this particular system. What we're going to do is to uh, simply program a basic element, one that is uh, very commonly used. We're going to do a uh, system enable like, that can be used like on a chill water system. Uh, that will, uh, you know, enable the system once outside air temperature reaches above the set point. So the first thing we're going to do is to insert an object or a control system. We're going to go to our insert tab, select control system, and we are going to name our control system something that we can easily remember, something related to exactly what we're going to have it doing. And of course, we're going to go through our review screens here. And once we get through all of these, we will have our blank control system created. And here it is. You can see there's absolutely nothing in this window. This is where we are going to be writing our programming. Now, what we need to do once we press our edit button, let's take a quick look through some of the elements of the control system programming. Uh, what we have on our right side is of course where we will be doing the actual programming. These buttons are uh, where we will be able to select the various logic blocks for the programming. Here we have the math tab, then we have the boolean tab for those of you all who are familiar with uh, boolean logic. We have uh, you know statistical there are just a wide range of logic blocks available within this type of programming. It is something that is very powerful. Once again, it is something that also does use a lot of memory in your device. This, of course, is the, a selector block. Uh, we have, of course, you know, comparator blocks, control blocks, you know, greater than, equal to, less than, that sort of thing. Uh, and there is just a lot of usability in this system. Constants, we have span blocks, floating, uh, timing. I mean, it, it is just unlimited virtually what you can do inside this. You're really only limited to the memory of the, your device. So what we're going to do Again, we're going to just write a simple program looking at outside air temperature to turn on a system. The attributes tab, this particular block here where I have my mouse, is the input. If you want to look at a particular input from a controller, you will use that block there. Sort of uh, what I'm going to do here is go down and get our outside air temperature. This is our controller that we are going to be turning the system on in. So this is the hardware input for the outside air temperature. So I'm simply going to highlight that. I'm going to come over here to my block, click and drag that input block into the control system. Now I have told the logic that I want to look at that particular input. Now that is one of the inputs that I want to look at. Another is going to be my set point value, which is simply an analog uh, point that has been created under this controller. So now I highlight it, I come back down to that input, and then I simply grab, I click, and drag once again, and now I am pulling my input 
uh, that input block into our system as well. Now then, these are the two inputs that we are going to be comparing. We're going to be comparing the set point, which is here, to the actual outside air temperature. These values, if the outside air temperature goes above our set point value, we are going to use this to turn on the system. This is just a very simple program that uh, you know is very useful in some applications. And for the, you know this particular demonstration, this is something that will work very well. Uh, you know, once you have your inputs selected that uh, that you are going to be writing to, your next step is going to be to go to the particular comparator, the control block that you want. In this case, we're going to be doing a comparison once the outside air temperature is greater than the set point. So we will then grab the appropriate logic block for that. Once again, uh, you know, what we will do is simply click and drag. And we will simply drop that onto our screen. We will go to the tip or this, uh, we'll grow and we'll make this just a little bit larger to where you can see it a little easier. We are going to now make a few connections, but uh, before we do that, we are going to need one other point. I'm going to need a constant value here that we're going to use as a differential. So what I'm going to do there is simply to select the control value. Uh, you know, I'm, you would think that uh, I would be using an input here, but no, I want a constant, a floating value, a floating constant, which is what we're going to do here. Now, to connect your logic blocks, you see how the mouse turned uh, almost like a uh, magic wand, and uh, what we will do is we will connect those up. Uh, you know very easily now the next thing that we want to do is we want to grab our output that we're going to be writing to For this particular logic block. So now that we have what we're writing to Highlighted we simply go to the output and then we will drag and drop it onto our screen as well Now then we'll start making our connections and simply click into the very end of your input, you'll see how the mouse has changed to look like a little magic wand. You click and then simply drag a line to the particular input point that you want on your logic block. And you do the same here, click and drag. And for the differential as well, we now have those connected. Now we are going to connect our output. We will simply do it the same way instead of, uh, you know, clicking on the, uh, you know, on the output. Let's, let's, we'll do it the same way. Now, this block here, you have the option of changing the priority array for how this is written. I would suggest that you keep all of your LCT programming to the same priority array that makes troubleshooting a little easier if you're trying to figure out exactly where something is triggered from. It makes it so much easier to uh, work with that way. So now then that we have all of this written, you know, this basic program written, the next step is simply to save it. And it may take it just a moment or so in order for it to save the file. Now then, we can see here that it has a value of true going to that output. That means that it would turn the system on because the outside air temperature is above what we currently have the set point set to. Now then, once the outside air temperature, here is our set point, and what I'm actually going to do is I am actually going to change the value of that set point, but uh, I want to make sure that I don't trip the system, so I'm going to override this temporarily. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value of this set point, and I'm going to drive it above what it is currently showing the outside air temperature as being. We will see then how this logic block 
reacts. So what I'm going to do here, I've just double clicked on the particular block that I want to override. So now I'm just going to enter a value here that is greater than what my current outside value is. And then once I press the save button in just a moment, you will see that it has changed to false. Now that is just simply comparing those two inputs into this logic block. It has now changed the state of the output going to this. Now you can kind of get an idea of how useful this can be, uh, you know, in certain in certain systems. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm simply going to double click my input again, and I'm going to release that override that I put on it. And once it returns to its normal value, it will then change that output back to true. Now, if I did not have that override on that system, it would have taken it off and then back on. LCT is a very powerful tool. It is, you know, something that is very useful and you can see the complexities that uh, can be done with this type of programming. Anyways, guys, I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope it gives you an idea of some of the basic elements of LCT programming. You need to be aware that anytime you program using the LCT, uh, that it is a memory hall. You need to be aware of the amount of memory that you have available within your NAEs and NCEs. It is an extreme memory hog. Uh, every little element, every little connection point, everything is seen as an object within your controller. And it does eat up a lot of memory. Uh, whenever possible, I would highly recommend that you keep system programming down to the controller level itself, whether it's an FEC, a DX, or whatever, UNT. Uh, you need to try to keep as much as possible all of your logic at the controller level. LCT is a great way to link multiple controllers. If uh, you know if you need to uh, share data between controllers, uh, there are sometimes that uh, you can have multiple controllers within one system uh, that need to share information back and forth. Uh, it can be used. Uh, you know, an example of that is a, one of the systems that we have is a chilled water system that has both a DX9100 as well as an FEC as part of the system. Uh, it was part of a uh, renovation within a building that, uh, you know, they did not change out the controller and go completely with an FEC. And in the meantime, what we did is, you know, found a way to blend those together. And that's where the LCT programming really shines, you know, having two dissimilar controllers being able to work together. And this type of programming that I demonstrated in this video, once again, is a very, very elemental program. I just wanted to give you some of the basics of how this can be used. But uh, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and drop any comments and questions down below. And thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,